I have a unique job. I work 14 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't get weekends. I don't get holidays. Um, and technically, I'm unemployed. So I have just two clients, and they cry a lot. They <laughs> scream at me. They harass me. They don't know how to tie their shoes. And they don't understand the idea of sharing. So, I am a congressional aide. <laughs> I'm, I'm a stay-at-home dad, full-time. Um, as you can imagine, the position comes with quite a bit of uh, prestige and glory. I'm a pretty powerful person, but it can be pretty thankless. I was putting my four-year-old to bed, and I said, I love you. And she said, I farted. <laughs> and I accidentally interrupted her while she was peeing once. And she said, can I please have some privacy? And I said, can you please get out of the front yard? <laughs> this is that four-year-old. <laughs> She's cute, right? She's got sexy parents. <laughs> um, she is assertive. Um, imaginative, and she questions absolutely everything. She also has a condition where she uh, has a leak in her skull, and the contents of her mind fall out of her mouth all day. <laughs> and this, this kid never shuts up. She even talks in her sleep. Um, she talks to me while I'm trying to take care of this guy. Um, I know, right? It's like, it's like every parent's dream. It's like, let me stand in front of a room of people and show them pictures of my kids. Um, but she'll be talking to me while I'm trying to take care of him. He's two years old. He talks significantly less than his sister, which is very refreshing. But I'm wrestling him into a pair of pants, and I'm rolling up a dirty diaper with one hand, and she's like, Daddy. And I'm like, Sadie, not now. We really need to rock hold still. She's like, Daddy, seahorses have babies. I'm like, okay, that's wonderful, but we're going to be like, Rocco, beards are not for pulling. And she says, Daddy, oh, I think if I flush the toilet, Tinkerbell's going to come out with some of her friends and maybe a basket of laundry and maybe a camera. <laughs> so that's a snapshot of my average day. Um, there's really nothing else I'd rather be doing. Um, but it's the hardest job I've ever had. Um, but I, I picked up a few tricks along the way. Um, if you have a two-year-old who wants juice, um, and he's yelling and screaming because he wants this juice, you've got about 30 seconds to deliver said juice, or he's going to freak out, and he's going to ruin your afternoon. It's just going to be wrecked. So what I've learned along the way is if you have a juice box, and it truly is a juice box, stick with me, you need to remove the straw from the box in the wrapper, then remove the wrapper, insert and proceed. But if you have a juice pouch, like one of those Capri Sun things, you need to hold the straw to the package, push the straw out of the wrapper while it's still attached, then insert and proceed. I don't know why, but it works. And it'll save you those critical 30 seconds. The DVD player in the car, when do you turn it on? Well, you can't wait until, if you're on a long drive, you can't hold off until they're screaming their heads off to turn it on, because then it becomes a reward for screaming. We don't, we don't play that shit in my house. Um, so, <laughs> you have to really know your children, and, and know when they're about to freak out, and then turn it on. Also, when we go to playgrounds, this is actually a sculpture garden, but it looks a little dangerous. But I have to assess. <laughs> I have to assess very quickly what's dangerous and what is. Is there any broken glass around? Uh, who's going to fall off of what? Are there any um, suspicious adults around? Are there any suspicious children? Um, and what are the rules of the playground? First, no throwing sand. Second, if you bring toys, you have to be willing to share. We don't bring a lot of toys. <laughs> So before I entered into indentured servitude to, uh, to miniature ingrates, I, uh, I was in the Air Force for 12 years. Um, I was a 
broadcast journalist, radio DJ, TV news guy. I was a photojournalist. I was even the editor of a magazine at some point, which probably wasn't a good idea. <laughs> um, and I did two kinds of things when I was there. I did some stuff that was uh, you probably wish you could have done, and I did a bunch of shit that was not as good, and you probably wish you could have never seen. Um, so the good stuff, I lived in uh, Europe for 12 years, overseas, the whole time. Started in Germany, moved to Italy, then moved back to Germany, and I went on assignments from there. I traveled quite a bit for my job. Um, I used to snowboard in the Swiss Alps for the weekend. Yes, I did that. Um, and for work and pleasure, I traveled to 30-something countries on four continents. Crazy weekend. But I went to some horrible chaos ridden places. Um, among them, Bosnia and Afghanistan. I did one tour in Bosnia, two in Afghanistan. Um, on my second tour in Afghanistan, I um, was doing a story on a field hospital. And uh, a soldier came in and he was very badly wounded. And uh, the team did everything they could for him. Um, in Pakistan, in 2005, I uh, flew to Islamabad to cover the Air Force's role in um, the relief efforts on the earthquake there. And I saw people just beating each other over um, basic food and water. And it was pretty horrible. I walked into a soccer stadium, and uh, the field was full of just bodies. Some dead, some dying. And that smell stuck in my nose for weeks. And the images those those never go away. So I got some benefit out of the job. I traveled the world. Uh, I mean, I went to Ghana, Niger, Kurdistan, Hungary, Poland, Romania. That's me shooting video in Paris. This was my last business trip in the military. I don't know if I can dream shoot video basically in Paris. Do it. Um, so I used to travel the world with a camera and sometimes a gun. But nowadays, I know what a fairy is. So I was talking to my mom and my daughter's preschool, and uh, she, you know, we, we, the stay-at-home dads in Minneapolis, we have a joke about stay-at-home moms, we call them the yoga pants and militia. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was talking to a member of the militia, and uh, my military service came in, and uh, she said, you know, it's a shame that you're not using any of the skills that you learned in the military. And I, I thought about that, and I was like, no, no. I'm not a journalist anymore, but I use plenty of what I learned pretty much every day. I've told you some bad shit that we haven't seen. <laughs> but I use plenty of what I learned every day. I mean, whether you're in a combat zone, and even though I never saw combat, you still have to kind of keep your head together. Right? Um, you can even be in a combat zone or wrestling a toddler with a preschooler in your ear, and you still have to kind of keep your head from day one in the military, they taught us um, attention to detail. You know, notice the small things or someone's going to get killed. And I still notice the small things, like straws, which is my business. General Patton said, um, don't tell people how to do things. Tell them what to do and let them surprise you with the results. He's a brilliant leader. He's excellent advice, but it just does not apply to small children. <laughs> <laughs> what I did learn about leadership in the military was that it's very important to be good. Like me, I'm going to learn how to freak out, and it's time to turn on the learner mode or whatever the hell it is. Excuse me. When you travel a lot, especially into questionable areas, you kind of have to keep your head on a swivel and be aware of your surroundings because your safety depends on vision or your children's safety, depending on what's taking place. 
This is my wife. That's my daughter, Sadie. This is me. That's my wife. Uh, her name is Jana, and she is wonderful. She works her ass off so one of us can stay home full time and really focus on being tortured by the chicken. <laughs> So she and I were discussing what I was going to talk about today, and she said, you know, why don't you kind of lean toward uh, military-specific skills? So I thought about that, and I was like, well, oh, military-specific, anti-terrorism training, because children are like terrorists. <laughs> and if you show any weakness, they're going to pounce and exploit that weakness to meet their enemies. <laughs> um, but then I was like, well, how about a uniform? I was like, I still love a uniform, t-shirt and jeans, every day. It's one less thing i got to think about. But the thing of it is, when, when I was in, I didn't really learn any like secret special skills. I learned uh, life skills. I learned how to manage my, my thoughts and my things and my life. And I'll pass that on to my children. Um, I'll also teach them um, integrity and value. And I will teach them to understand and be part of something larger than themselves. They own the world, not the other way around. They're going to live when Sadie and Araka complain about this food or that medicine, and I can tell them there are children in Africa who don't have enough food and who don't have enough medicine. How do I know? Because I've seen it. I will teach them to value human life because I've seen it take a hit. So I took from the military the skills that I need to be the dad that I am today. And I think like a lot of veterans, I, I really do have a lot to offer. So maybe I am a guy. But if you need anything, you should just ask, because unlike some people, 